Hello everyone, my name is Logan World, and welcome back to another reaction video. Today's episode is um, a game theory video, haven't done that in a while. The latest video just came out like 5 minutes ago, <laughs> so I'm literally react to, reacting to it as it uh, came out. And from what I can see, it already has 34,000 views. That's because that show is just too popular. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking because I'm actually interested in seeing what uh, is going to happen here because I haven't pre-watched it yet. This just came out. So, without further ado, we're gonna react to it, both you and I, and this time it's not gonna be me already seeing it and you probably already seeing it. It's us both already seeing it. Wait, I think I said that wrong again. Ah, the ocean. A beautiful blue crystal on this cuboidal planet we call home. Home to sea creatures large and small. The majestic squid, the playful dolphin. The reborn souls of the dead waiting to drag into your watery grave! All today on Game Theory. Hello Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, where today we're engaging in a very mature 13 plus critical analysis of a fun for all ages game, Minecraft. Does that cover me? Not gonna get hit by any FTC fines, right? Here, let me throw in some big words just in case. Entrepreneur! Yeah, I probably should make a video about that. Uh, the whole Copa and YouTube dying, from what my girlfriend says. <laughs> my girlfriend's opinion is that YouTube's dying. I just like, oh well, you made it to being stupid again. Big deal. <laughs> uh, anyways. Membership, anti disestablishmentarianism, defenestration, rampant consumerism. Hey, you know, speaking of rampant consumerism and that 2020 cop purge, if you want to help protect this channel while also showing your theorist pride and staying cozy this winter season, brand new theoryware is available right now, right below this video. We've got everything from a glow in the dark t shirt to new lounge pants, a Nintendo Maybe Switch nice case, an awesome new flake jacket that combines a windbreaker and a hoodie, and even this little tube tumbler guy. You try to push him over, you can't knock him over. Anyway, items are starting to sell out, so if you have a theorist in your life that you want to get a cool holiday gift for, or if you just want to show your theorist pride yourself, check him out right now. That's a hint for my girlfriend. There's an idea for Christmas, make sure to do it. <laughs> How to ensure that you get yours in plenty of time before the holidays. Also, since we're doing quick update stuff, just a reminder that December 3rd is our big charity live stream in honor of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which helps cure kids of cancer while also being a world leader in cancer research. And even though the stream might be happening on a Tuesday, it is going all day. So whenever you want to tune in, we'll be there waiting for you. And the big reveal of that new FNAF game is happening during the usual live stream time of 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific. So I hope to see all of you there at least at some point point throughout the day. Scott Coffin literally just revealed on Reddit that the game is going to contain, get this, a half a million dollars for us to find. If we find it and claim it, then he'll donate it to St. Jude. So basically, the gauntlet has been thrown down for Daco, Markiplier, and I, and the pressure is on for us to perform. The thing is going to be a blast, and all of it is in honor of an incredible cause, so please, please try and make it so we can make the holidays just a bit brighter for some amazing- One sec. I know I just interrupted the video for no- good reason, but I do have a good reason. Don't mind me. Alright, uh, where's the news? Now back to the video. 
amazingly brave kids out there fighting for their lives. All right, with all that housekeeping out of the way, let's talk some Minecraft, shall we? Yeah. We're getting our Little Mermaid on and going down where it's wetter, okay, down yes. where it's better, under the sea. In Minecraft, the underwater biomes just don't seem to get enough love. Sure, everyone is always excited to make songs dedicated to the fiery death plains of the nether or to discuss the otherworldly void of the end, but the watery depths of the overworld offer just as many breathtaking sights, unusual creatures, and head-scratching mysteries, and yet no one really seems to care. It's kind of like art imitating life, because here in real life we're so focused on space exploration that most of our undersea biomes here on Earth have gone completely unexplored. I think we've only seen like 5% of them. So today I'm gonna change that. Not the 5% thing. Heck no, that water is cold. No, I'm just gonna sit on my butt and talk about oceans in a video game for about 18 minutes. What's the deal with the Guardians and the Elder Guardians? Where did they come from? Are they just giant fish creatures that really like hanging out in ocean monuments? Did they build the ocean monuments? Seems pretty unlikely. And speaking of those buildings, what's the deal with those massive underwater mazes? How did the drowned fit into all this? What are these trident wielding mer people? Are they just zombies that fell into the water? Get ready to take the plunge, cause today and next episode, we're diving straight into the deep end. What first started me down the path of ocean? That way that image was set up of the um, symbol underwater, it kind of reminded me of some Nautica, not gonna lie. I've ever played that game. I can never do survival mode, I kept on doing creative mode because I can't do survival of anything but Minecraft. In mysteries were the Guardians, and their bigger granddaddies, the Elder Guardians. From a mob standpoint, I mean, sure, they're giant sea creatures with one eye and spikes. Nothing super weird there right off the bat, but what initially got my theorist senses tingling was the way that they attack. With a literal laser beam. An underwater eye beam that requires time to charge up before it launches at you and causes massive amounts of damage. That's, uh, that's pretty weird for a fish. Or really any sort of natural, organic living creature. I mean, Minecraft is a game full of fantastical creatures, don't get me wrong, but attacking with eye laser cannons just felt out of place for me. So I just kept swimming, just kept swimming, and stumbled across an even more us. unusual detail, their inability Ocean to movie. die. You see, if you take a guardian or elder guardian out of the water, it just flops around on the dry land, like a cubic magikarp. But why this matters is what doesn't happen. You see, it doesn't suffocate when exposed to the air. It literally just keeps flopping around until you carve it up to make sushi. Well, it's just a video game mechanic, I hear you saying, and you'd be right if only other fish behaved the same way. For every other fish in the game, you take it out of the water, it flops around and eventually dies. Take a squid out of the water, it suffocates and dies. Take a salmon out of the water, it suffocates and dies. Take a pufferfish or a cod out of the water, they suffocate and they die. If you can't tell, there were a lot of cuboidal animals that were harmed during the production of this video. Anyway, the guardians and the elder guardians are the only undersea creatures that can live in death definitely on the land. So between that and the laser eye thing, there was just something, pardon the pun, fishy about them. Or, actually that's completely the wrong pun because it was something that didn't feel fishy about them. Something that felt a bit less like an animal and a bit more like a machine. Let's look closer at the design of the Guardian. Notice the colors of its flesh and the cracked patterns across its body? It's nearly identical to the prismarine blocks that form the ocean monument around them. Coincidence? Oh, yeah, right. I think not. And that isn't just my so observation many. either. In Minecraft's official mob beast Theory, the in-depth guide written from the perspective of an animal researcher in the Minecraft world, they specifically allude to this fact. Quote, their skin is cracked, as if carved from some ancient rock, and their single white eye is somehow both unknowable and cruel. End quote. Ancient rock, you say? Like, perhaps prismarine? The very same stone that serves as the primary building block for all ocean monuments? The only place in the game where they spawn? Further supporting the idea that the Guardians aren't made of flesh, but rather of prismarine stone, is their drop beam. Behavior. When killed, the Guardian has a 40% chance of dropping Prismarine Crystal, which, for a fish, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, if you kill a sheep, it drops you wool. If you drop a cow, it drops you, like, cow flesh. But if you're a non-organic creature built from the nearby rocks and minerals, well, that could certainly explain a whole lot. And speaking of their drop behavior, the Mob Beastiary does a drop of its own. Another interesting tidbit about the Guardians. Quote again, Elder Guardians will also drop a water-absorbing sponge if killed by an adventurer. And if it doesn't drop a Prismarine Crystal, Crystal, one will find raw fish of some kind in its place. Some scholars think that this is evidence that its diet consists of fish and other natural watery food stuff, but guardians have never been seen to wander far from their temple homes to catch them, so we cannot be sure. 
end quote. It's an odd detail to include there at the end, right? To specifically call out, hey, they drop fish, meaning that they might eat fish, but, you know, considering the fact that they never leave the ocean monuments they spawn in, they probably don't eat the fish. Again, all the evidence seems to be pointing to these creatures not being animals, as I'm sure we've all assumed them to be, but rather some sort of artificial creation. A defense mechanism built of the surrounding materials somehow mixed with real-life fish, or real-life fish DNA to protect the very monument that they spawn inside. Oh, no. What are you uh, doing, dude? Oh, it's my mouse. This thing sucks. But buying new gear isn't cheap. I found an Easter egg to save on gear. Shut up! Even the creature's anatomical design inside the mob oh. bestiary seems to contain some level of secrets. For most other mobs in the game, the book oh, has this incredible looking. illustration of their inner workings. The dense skeletons of the creeper, the humanoid brains of the Enderman. But for the Elder Guardian, we get ourselves a piece-by-piece -piece dissection of the eye, with components that look kind of like wires, leading to panels meant to charge up its laser. And underneath that thick, rocky skin, nothing much. A thin layer of pink with a gray area that appears to be stuck. Stone. It's certainly not any sort of bony structure, it's not anything that resembles the inner workings of a fish, and it's certainly not anything that looks remotely organic. Lastly, it's <sighs> worth noting that the Elder Guardian's eye will That's still right, have the honest. ability to track a player who's invisible, seeming to suggest that this mob is dealing in the thermal spectrum, tracking your heat signature rather than any sort of visual sign of your movement patterns. So again, another weird, interesting detail about these creatures. I mean, oh, even the name seems to allude to it, Guardian. Considering they only spawn inside ocean monuments and they're called guardians, if they were indeed man-made, well, clearly they were made to act as some sort of security mechanism. But then, what are they supposed to be protecting? Well, despite ocean monuments being massive complexes, there's really only two unusual rooms worth calling out inside of them. The sponge room and the treasure room. The first is fairly self-explanatory. It's the sponge room. It is a room full of sponges. There's not much more to say there. I'm personally more of a loofah man myself, but still, it's odd that whoever built this enormous building deemed it necessary to dedicate a room to this one oddly specific item. More on that in a minute because it's the treasure room that I and I think the guardians want to focus on. You see, while every monument may not necessarily contain itself a sponge room, all monuments do contain themselves a treasure chamber. A central area with a tall ceiling and eight gold blocks located in the middle. Gold blocks that are encased or hidden behind a layer of dark prismarine. And it's this right here that is perhaps the most oddly specific design choice hidden in the entire oh, game. Here we are in the middle of this massive underwater complex made entirely of one material. Just varieties of prismarine everywhere. That's it. And yet smack in the middle, the designers decide to include this massive golden box. All right, that alone would make some kind of sense, I guess. Displaying your prized treasure like it's a core to the entire building, but it's the fact that the gold is hidden under another layer. That the gold is literally encased within a box of dark prismarine. Within a box of another stone hidden away that really strikes me as noteworthy here. And it's those details, coupled with the overall design of the structure, that leads me to believe that the ocean monuments were made to be religious buildings. First, let's just start by looking at the overall design of the ocean monument. It's yep, a classic ziggurat structure. A staircase-like building with wide flat landings that get narrower each level up. Basically, it's like a big pyramid, but with some stopping points as you get higher. Whereas a more traditional pyramid, like those in Egypt, consists of a smooth, continuous Whoa. line all the way to the peak. Ziggurats were famous in ancient Mesopotamia, well, basically the first place you learn about in world history class and never fully oh. understand or care about. Do not remind me of that class. As far as it was learning history, my brain still aches from learning history. Cradle of civilization, have no idea what that is. Let's just get to ancient Greece and Egypt already. Those are the cool ones. Or at least that's how I felt when I was learning those units. So I went back, refreshed myself and all that information, and let me clear it up for you. Mesopotamia back in the day was where modern day Iraq and part of Syria are today. So basically it's an ancient civilization located in the Middle East. That is where you would find structures like the one that we see depicted here in Minecraft. So knowing the real life structure that these monuments are based on, we can start to get clues as to what their intended use was in the Minecraft lore. You see, in ancient Mesopotamia, a ziggurat's main purpose was religious. It was meant to connect heaven and earth. They're thought to have been built to literally house the gods. As such, only priests were allowed to get inside of the ziggurats. And this hypothetical religious use seems to be supported by Minecraft. 
You see, one other key feature of the Ocean Monument is the fact that underneath the monument are 23 giant pillars that stretch down to the ocean floor. And it's always 23, unless of course there's some weird spawn hiccup. But that 23 number, I've said it so many times this episode, it seems so oddly specific, right? It has got to mean something. And wouldn't you know it, I think it does. You see, the number 23 is just one of those numbers that's considered to be really important to humans. It's a prime number, which all already makes it special. It's the number of chromosome pairs that we have in our body. It's basketball star Michael Jordan's number. There's a really bad Jim Carrey movie all about the number 23. So, you know, really important stuff here. But all joking aside, there's even something called the 23 Enigma, essentially a belief that the number has some sort of magical or mystical significance because of how much it shows up in our day-to-day -day lives. So when it comes to numbers, 23 is kind of a big deal. Just behind top 10, lucky seven, and I guess unlucky 14. But when it comes to religion, 23 so is an even bigger deal. You see, in the Islamic faith, there's the Quran. It's the Islamic sacred book, just like- I have a challenge for you guys. If you guys watch this entire video and try to count every single reference he makes, I want you guys to put in the comments down below how many references do he make. And I'm gonna bet you that it's gonna be 23 references. <laughs> because he's talking about 23 a lot. And he's constantly bringing up references almost every single second. So, how many references did he do? Go ahead and start that when you're done with the video. Uh, just a fun challenge to see if you guys, if I'm right or not. <laughs> um, also, something fun to do. Anyway, let's continue. Like Christians have themselves the Bible and Judaism has the Torah. The Quran is believed to be the word of God as dictated to the prophet Muhammad. And it took, get this, 23 years for the entire book to be revealed to Muhammad. It's also Muslim belief that the first verses of the Quran were revealed to the prophet Muhammad on the 23rd night of the ninth Islamic month. So again, in the Islamic oh, faith, the number 23 matters a lot. Meaning that those 23 pillars in the Minecraft Ocean Monument could very easily be referencing important pieces of religious architecture found around the Middle East. No, ziggurats aren't mosques, where Islamic faith is currently practiced, but they are connected by geographic region and religious connotation. Now, here is where everything comes together. If Minecraft's ocean monuments were indeed places of religious significance, where an ancient race of people believed gods could come down onto the earth and live, it could explain the box of gold encased in dark prismarine with sea lanterns in each of its corners. But to understand why, you have to be familiar with the Kaaba. The Kaaba is a black cube building at the center of Islam's most important mosque, the Great Mosque of Mecca. It is the most important place in the Islamic faith. So important that practitioners of Islam are almost required to take a pilgrimage to see this once in their life and give worship there. Why? Well, it's thought that the Kaaba is the house of God, the sacred house, the connection between heaven and the earth. The Kaaba is a sacred place with an inside of gold and marble, but on the outside, it appears to just be a large black cube of dark granite. Just like we see in the game with the dark prismarine being on the outside of those golden cubes. In each of the corners in Minecraft is a sea lantern, and wouldn't you know it, each corner of the Kaaba also has itself a special symbolic significance, most often pointing to one key location from Islamic history. So could it be that the guardians of Minecraft are protecting the most sacred treasure of all, the location, or at least the perceived location, of God himself? It's Sounds crazy, but remember, the ending of Minecraft does indeed have two godlike figures speaking with each other about your gameplay. The fact that gods exist in the canonical oh, universe of Minecraft is an established part right, of the lore. I mean, was, uh, a lot of the details uh, really line two. up here. The ziggurat episode structure connects episode us episode to the Middle East and Islamic two. tradition. Yes. The 23 season pillars two. and their importance to Islamic faith, covering up the golden, important interior of a building with a dark stone exterior just like the Kaaba. The perfect cubic shape of both of those structures, the importance of each of the corners, the need to have the guardians protecting this place at all. Heck, even the name. This is the Ocean Monument. It isn't a ruin, it's not a temple, it's a monument. Monument is a word used to honor a place of historical significance, a place of the dead, or an important figure like a god. You don't call the building that houses your sponge room a monument. Oh yeah, and it's worth mentioning here as one last final note, the one practical function of the ziggurat was actually to serve as just a high place 
place on which the priests could escape rising water that would flood the Mesopotamian areas every year. Rising water, huh? Maybe the underwater monuments weren't quite so underwater. So we have ourselves a heat-seeking, laser-shooting fish that might have been man-made to protect an underwater monument dedicated to what may or may not be an ancient god. Now the only question is, who built it? Why is it here, underwater? And that, my friend is explained through two words, the drown. But that theory will have to wait for another day. In the meantime, remember, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Well, we sure learned a lot of historical and Minecraft you know, uh, jazz. <laughs> the, the question mark in my sentence was weird. Uh, so, my honest opinion, though I care not for the religious aspects of this part of the video, mainly because I'm an atheist, I don't really care about religion and stuff like that, it's not my forte. My girlfriend, however, she probably might find that interesting. Though, she's Christian, so she might not even agree with the whole Islamic stuff. I don't know, religion's complicated, just like this government is in girls. Everything's an enigma to me. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, tell me what I should do to improve the video. I'm pretty sure by now you all already know what to do. Anyways, I'm going to go back to playing my video games. Possibly after eating a few cookies. I <laughs> uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. Have a good day, and goodbye.